Hallelujah. 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 Living in shalom. Wow, that, yeah. that is so important that you, you got to have shalom in your life, you know. And the only way you can have that shalom is you got to be in Him. <laughs> in Him we live, what? In Him we move. In Him we have our being. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Have you become an enemy of Yah? Interesting. Hallelujah. Father, yeah, we thank you so much. Hallelujah. We thank you for this day. We ask you to continue to bless us, continue to give us understanding in your word, continue to guide us. Hallelujah, Father. Yeah, we need your guidance. Hallelujah, Father. Yeah, we need your presence. Hallelujah. And we ask, Father, yeah, that we do not anything, Father, yeah, that will cause your presence to move away from us. So we ask you, Father, yeah, to bless us and keep us, Father, yeah. Guide us. We love you. Give us understanding in your word. Yahushua Mashiach's name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, last week, uh, one of our uh, moderators um, asked if we could restart the meditation. Meditation, the yes. Speak meditation. Yes. Um, one thing I did want to do before we got started is I wanted to... Um, thank all of our moderators who yes. um, are taking care of and manning the live chat during the broadcast. It's very important that people are able to hear the word without interruption or without uh, distractions. And many times uh, you do have those who will come into the chat and distract the broadcast. And yes. some people are actually <coughs> um, irritated by that. And some people can miss things because uh, they may be new. And those little side things that happen um, need to be dealt with immediately. Yes. And so they are there to put out fires. And in many cases, ask, uh, answer simple questions or post scriptures and yes. you know various things of that nature and so I just wanted to take this time out to thank our moderators um, this is a service to Yah as well as to the ministry and so we, we thank you all for that yes absolutely we thank you Hallelujah. and as far as the meditation yes um, we can do meditation yes I'm going to have um, so uh, Sophia read a scripture first and then we'll have our meditation hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, y'all, for your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you all to close your eyes, and I want you to think about the words that, that I'm saying. I want you to repeat after me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In him, In him I live. I live. In him, in him I move. I move. In him, in him I have my being. I have my being. I am in Yahusha. I am in Yahusha. I am walking in him. I am walking in him. No power. 
No power can stop me. Can stop me. Because I am in him. Because I am in him. Greater is he. Greater is he that is in me. That is in me. Than he. He, that is in the world. That is in the world. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am saved. I am saved. I am filled. I am filled. I am blessed. I am blessed. I walk in your truth. I walk in your truth. I walk in your ways. I walk in your ways. I love you, Father. I love you, Father. The love of the Father. The love of the Father is upon me. Is upon me. Nothing can separate me. Nothing can separate from me. the love of Yahusha. From the love of Yahushua that dwells in me. That dwells in me. I am strong. 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 No weapon. No weapon that is formed against me. That is formed against me. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. And every tongue. And every tongue that rise against me. That rise against in me. In judgment. In judgment. Yah shall condemn. Yah shall condemn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yah is good. And everyone's saying that the good. volume is very low. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let me turn it up a little bit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We're going to quickly adjust the volume. As we How is it now? Difference. Is it better? Let us know if the volume is better for you all um, that had a concern about that before we get started with the word. This is the day that Yahuwah hath made. We shall rejoice and be, and be glad, glad in it. Hallelujah. Okay, better. Good, good. <coughs> the volume is perfect. Loud and clear. Hallelujah. Okay, let's, let's get started. Family. Hallelujah. Have you become the enemy of Yah? I want you to understand something, right? You have to, you ask yourself this question. See, if you, if you ask yourself this question and you think about this, then you will begin to understand how Yah has enemies. Hmm. Now think about this, right? Do you think a person will go out to the heavens and look up and if they knew he was there and actually looking down on them that they would look up and say, I hate you and I'm going to be your enemy. Most sane people wouldn't, but you know, there are those right. who. <laughs> but if they actually could see him and know that he's there, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So how's Yah got all these enemies? How is it that he has so many enemies? I'm going to tell you why. Okay, and what's going on? What's going on is that Yah has purposed some things. And people are interfering with his purposes. Thus making themselves his enemy. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Let's go to Nahum chapter 1. We're going to read that entire chapter. This is the book of Nahum chapter 1. Okay, Nahum chapter 1 reads as follows. <clears throat> the burden of Nineveh, the seifer of the vi vision of Nachum, the El Koshi, El is jealous and Yahuwah revenges. Yahuwah revenges and is furious. Yahuwah will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. Yahuwah is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Yahuwah has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds and the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up all the rivers. Bashan languishes and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Yahuwah is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, 
and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do you imagine against El Yahuwah? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. For while they be folded together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. There is one come out of you that imagines evil against Yahuwah, a wicked counselor. Thus says Yahuwah, thou, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. For now will I break his yoke from off you, and will burst your bounds in sunder. And Yahuwah has given a commandment concerning you, that no more of your name be sown out of the house of your Elohim. Will I cut off graven images and molten image? I will make your grave, for you are vile. Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that brings good news, that publishes peace. O Yahuwah, keep your solemn feast, perform your vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off. Now, interesting passage. Okay. So we read in this passage that Yahuwah has enemies. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he says darkness is going to pursue these enemies until they are utterly destroyed. Yahuwah has enemies. What I find amazing is how people can become the enemy of Yahuwah Almighty. It's like, don't you realize that you cannot defeat him? You can't defeat him. But the problem is they really, some of them don't realize that they have made themselves his enemy. And they've done it in such a way to where they're confused about things. Mm -hmm. And what this message is about, you all, is so that... We've been doing quite a few messages that's dealing with the heart, the manifestations of the things that's in the heart of man, okay? And this here deals with the heart, and I'll prove it to you how it deals with the heart, okay? Now, Jeremiah was given a task, wasn't he, to be a prophet of Yahuwah, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Look at all the people that come against Jeremiah, right? Yes. Did you know just in coming against a person that Yah is for automatically makes you his enemy? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Automatically, when you come against a person that Yah is using, you automatically make yourself his enemy. Mm -hmm. Wow. That means we got to be careful, yeah, right? Yes. We got to be careful. Mm -hmm. We got to be to the point to where when we see things, see, that's why you got to think about this, right? You remember when the apostles were out doing miracles with Yahushua? And they say, wait a minute, there's someone over here that's doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. And Yahushua said, well, uh, uh, he's for the kingdom. So, And they were like, but wait a minute, how's he over there? And Yahushua was like, uh, pretty much uh, lead him along. <laughs> <laughs> leave them alone. That's because sometimes we think that just because we're with the Messiah and he's leading and guiding us, that this person over here might not be with him, right? Well, people are in different stages, right? People are in different stages. That's why you can't look at someone and judge a person based on where they are right now. In most cases, you can't because you don't know what, what y'all could be doing in that person's life, mm -hmm. right? I've said this and I've said this time and time before. If you were to talk to me 10 years ago, I sounded a lot different than what I sound now. My beliefs were a lot different. But guess what? I was still in Yah's will because I was following his spirit. He was guiding me into all truth. You understand? And a, a scripture that will tie into that is when it says the steps of the righteous are ordered by Yah. That's right. Do we think that our steps are only ordered from the moment we come into the truth? 
our steps every moment. That's right. As a matter of fact, from the day we were born, was leading us up to now. That's right. Everything that took place in our lives from the moment we were born got us to the place that we are right now. That's right. Um, We often share uh, things um, of our past with our children, of even how um, my husband and I met. And if certain things didn't take place, that's right. First, then we would have never met and they would have never existed. We explain this stuff to them. That's right. So you can't even curse situations. That's right. You might say, well, if I wasn't on this particular road this day, I wouldn't have met this particular person. Yeah. And in meeting this person, I ended up at this place at this time. And ending up at this place at this time, I met my husband or I met my wife. Yeah. But that person that you were on that road with, might have been a thorn in your life at the moment that they were there but because of something dealing with that person you ended up meeting your husband or your wife and the children that you have exist because of something that happened to you that you considered bad at that moment but it led you to a certain place that's right so when we look at things like that and understand when the scripture says the steps of the righteous are ordered by yah though they may fall because sometimes even your fall is ordered. That's right. And we don't understand that. We can't even wrap our brains yeah. around that because we think that total righteousness and total perfection are the things that made the most hot pick us. That's right. Oh, I'm going to pick this one because she is so perfect and he is so perfect. He is so absolutely <laughs> perfect that I want him. In our falls, mm-hmm. the most high used those falls to shape us. Yeah. To make us who we are. So you got to learn from the fall. That's right. Okay. If you're one of those who likes to wallow in the fall and remain there and you go from bad to worse, then chances are Mm -hmm. you are one of those who the Most High is going to have to beat into submission. Yeah. Or he's going to destroy you in the fall. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your life, that's why why you got to get a good understanding about things. You you just got to have a good understanding. Okay. Because... When you think, when I think about Jeremiah and all the people that came against him, it got to the point where Jeremiah started praying against them. Yes, these these are Israelites. He's praying against, them, mm-hmm. telling y'all to make their make their um make make them fatherless, make their children fatherless. You know, and and, and make the wives widows. Yeah, I mean, it was like saying some some deep things. You know what he was praying. He even said bereave them of their children. Yeah, and so for most of us today, that sounds like some horrible stuff. It's yeah. like Jeremiah, you're a prophet, and you're telling the Most High to bereave people of their children you're telling yeah. the most high to take away husbands and wives and to uh crush them down to the ground and jeremiah was a righteous man yes you get this mm-hmm. so you got to understand these people made themselves an enemy of jeremiah but they actually made themselves the enemy of yah yes. because yah was using jeremiah in his days you see so then we got to get to the point where we see what we're doing we paying attention to these things because we could Un, we could unknowingly bring judgment in our own lives because we're being ignorant. Mm-hmm. Ignorance. Don't the word say my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge? Ignorance. Did y'all hear that? I want y'all to, I want y'all to pay attention to that word that yes. Russell just said. He says my people are destroyed. Yeah, listen to it. For the lack of knowledge. Yeah. So that means something. When you hear the word destroy, you think of decimated, yes. annihilated, uprooted. <laughs> yeah. Like Washman said the other day in the the message about the brute beast, the Most High will mow you down. That is what I think about when I think about destroy. So he's like, if you don't know, I'm not going to excuse you because you don't know. He says, you're going to be destroyed for what you don't know. So that is why we must take heed, family. That's right. Now, let me explain something to you, right? Okay. In the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of Yah, okay, among his people. He has some great ones, and he has some little ones, okay? Those that are least in his kingdom, great ones and little ones. Pay attention to this scripture, okay? Let's go to Matthew chapter 18, and I want you to read 1 through 14. I want you to pay attention, close attention to this scripture here. Matthew 18, verses 1 through 14. Mm -hmm. 
Again, that is Matthew 18, verses 1 through 14. At the same time came the Talmudim unto Yahusha, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of Yahuwah? And Yahusha called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Amen, I say unto you, except ye turn back and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah. Okay, now stop there one minute. I want y'all to listen to what he said there. See, he brought the little child there, not to say, oh, this little child is my little one. This is the little one in the kingdom. No, he brought the little child to say, you are supposed to be like this little child, pretty much. He said, except you can humble yourself as a little child. Wait a minute. Except you can be converted and become as a little child, you won't enter into the kingdom. Do you, are y'all even hearing this? You see how boastful we can get from time to time? We ain't like no little child, are we? Huh? From time to time, we are not like little children. We supposed to be humble like a little children. The greatest in the kingdom is supposed to be humble like a little child, or he won't make it in. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at all your spiritual leaders today in the world. Mm -hmm. Right? Are they humble like a little child? Wow. Isn't that something? Keep on reading. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of Yahuwah. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believes in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now listen to this real quickly. So basically he just told you that if you offend one of these, you are making yourself his enemy. <laughs> I mean, you should literally saying the same thing. He's saying that if you offend one of these, one of these little ones that have humbled themselves as a child, they became the least in the kingdom. He said, in, in becoming least, you become what? The greatest. He said that if you offend one of these, you have made yourself my enemy now. Wow. I mean, isn't, don't you feel the same way? Don't you feel the same way about your little kids? Right? Your little children. Okay? Don't you feel the same way? Right? I mean, I feel the same way about my little goat out there. <laughs> Yet alone my children. I don't want them to bother my goat. A wolf try to come in the yard, I will take that wolf out. Right? <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to think about how you feel, how y'all feel. Y'all's like, this is one of my little ones here, right? Don't you bother one of my little ones. Just like, just to give you an example of something, right? We have an enclosure that we keep the quail in. And I think this is like the third snake that have gotten in that thing. Is it the third one? This last one? Mm -hmm. First two snakes. We let him go. We took him across the field way over in another area. This last snake, we took him out. Because he swallowed a quail and we were like, okay, this is enough. Enough is enough. Time to get chopped in half. Exactly. So, understand what we're talking about here. Okay? He's saying that my little ones, if you hurt one of them, it's like you coming against me. This is my property is what y'all are saying. <laughs> Are you getting that? This is my property. This is my child. Okay? This is my work that you're interfering with. Now, keep reading. Woe unto the world because of offenses. <laughs> For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to the man by whom the offense comes. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said... Woe to this world because of offenses. Why? Because the whole world is offensive, aren't they? Each time you look around, they're offending everybody. Every chance they get, just stepping on people's feet, killing people, hurting people with their words. Wicked, right? He says, but he said, okay, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to the man to whom this offense cometh. Woe to him. That bring this offense. Now keep reading. Verse 8. 
Wherefore, if your hand or your foot offend you, cut them off and cast them from you. It is better for you to enter into life halt, or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet and be cast into everlasting fire. And if your eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into the fire of great, I mean, gay Hinnom. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the son of Adam is come to save that which was lost. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, does he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? Mm. And if so be that he find it, amen, I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to He gave the same example of a sheep or of a goat. Isn't that something? The same particular example. And so he's pretty much saying, and I, I like the scripture here where it says, Take heed that you despise not, that you despise not one of these little ones. Don't despise them. See, you have people that sit back and they'll be despising one of y'all's little ones. And y'all be sitting there looking at that person like this here. You despise one of my little ones? What does despise mean? Hmm? Can somebody tell me what despise mean? Huh? Hate? Mm, uh, uh. Hate. In the Greek here, this is what it says. To think against. To despise. Notice it says to think against. You remember the scripture we read earlier in, Nah in Nahum? Mm -hmm. Remember when he says that you let these thoughts lodge within your mind mm -hmm. against him? Is that something? Yes. Sit back uh, sit back looking at one of y'all's children like this. Thoughts just rolling your mind and looking at one of y'all's least in the kingdom like this. Y'all's looking down at you like this. Mm -hmm. You looking at his little one like this here, despising them in your heart. You know you despise them. You know it. Look in your heart. You know it. You sitting there looking and despising one of y'all's little ones. And y'all looking down at you just like this. Like, oh, okay. I see what's in your heart. Mm-hmm. I see what's in your heart. I see that you despise my little one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Are you hearing this? You understand? But this is what happens. When you, when you look at the scripture... He makes it clear Yahushua HaMashiach is confirming what the Old Testament it says. Mm -hmm. He's confirming it. He said, even one of my least. He said he would rejoice over going to find that one that has gone astray than the whole 99. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is amazing because it's right here in his word. You see, y'all don't want to lose one of his. And he won't. <laughs> and he won't. That's right. He, won't. <laughs> he sure won't. Mm -hmm. He sure won't. You know, the thing is... Many of us don't understand, you know, who a little one is. The problem is we don't understand how to judge correctly. You look at somebody and you look at a person that may be falling in sin, maybe making some mistakes or whatever, and you look at that person right away, you judge the person, how that person, you going to hell, dude. Yeah, you know, you ain't going to make it. And you right away just get to judging this person. Or you look at a person's life, see all the stuff that's going on in his life. Well, wait a minute. Don't the scripture says those whom he loves, he chastised? Mm -hmm. So when you see a person going through a lot of bad stuff, it could be because y'all love them and he's trying to get them into the kingdom. That could be why they're going through so much stuff. And what you are to do is you are to give them the word of Yah. That's you right. Correct them. That's them. right. You, that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to tell them what the word. You're not supposed to coddle a person. That's in right. Their sin, that's right. But you share the word with them. You share the truth with them. Even the harshness of it. Yeah. But we are not to judge anyone and make the declaration that yeah. someone is going to hell. Yeah. Because you can't make that determination. That sure is not okay. something any of us have been granted the power or authority to do. 
But what we have been given the power and yes. authority to do is to admonish one another. So, of course, if you see a brother or a sister falling in sin, you don't coddle them and tell them That's everything right. is going to be all right. You don't do that. You share the truth with them. If they accept it, fine. That's if they right. don't, just shake the dust off because you've planted a seed. One plants another souls, and Yah gives the increase. And if there's an increase to be had there, the Most High will take that person through the ringer right. while they're wallowing in their sins, because that's usually what happens. Yep, exactly. I haven't seen yet one person who was chosen and called by Yah who was able to just live um, a life <laughs> full of pleasure and joy and happiness yeah. until the day they die and didn't go through some type of suffering. Yeah. You go through something. Everybody go goes through, through different, depending right. on what it is you're involved in. You're going to go through something if you are not walking according to Yah's purpose for your life. He's yeah. going to make sure that that chastisement yeah. is upon you. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, you know. Uh, sometimes we look at people, we look at people in the state that they are now, and, you, and, you, and they may be smooth sailing. And you say, man, I wish my life was like their life, right? But guess what? You don't know how many rough rides he had before he got to that smooth sail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know what that person has been through. Yeah. That person could have been through hell. Yeah. You know, I know in my life, before I even met my wife, I had went through some stuff. And I was to the point where I was really just getting to the point where I was like, man. So if, if y'all had told me, hey, guess what? Even after you get married, you're going to continue to go through. And even years after into your marriage, you're going to continue to go through some things. That would have kind of been a little discouraging for me back in the days. But y'all had to give me a little at a time that you go through a little at a time. Then they got to give you these victories because the victories lifts you back up. Mm -hmm. See, if he just continued to pound you for 10 years straight, you you get tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right? You get tired of it. But he don't do that. What he does is he say, okay, you're going to go through a year of suffering here. And then after that year, I'm going to... Give you a little victory. You're going to shout, praise me, and have a little moment of freedom. But then i got to bring another one on you because i got to teach you another lesson. Sometimes he does that because he's trying to get you to a point to where you rise above the thorns and you're not getting choked out anymore. You understand? That's what he's really trying to do for you. Hallelujah. It would be amazing if we all were to take the time to chronicle our lives and yes. and write a journal of our life and the point that yes. we can actually remember. Some of some of you can remember back to when you were two years old. It would be amazing if we could actually write a journal of our own lives yes. and see exactly what Washington is talking about. How okay when I was at this point, things seemed to go pretty smooth. And if, if we are yes. really sincere and honest with ourselves, we will even put the good, the bad, and the ugly in there. Yep. And we can probably make a, draw a parallel between the times where we went astray yep. and when certain other things happen in our lives. Because I can think back to moments in my life where I went astray and then there was a slew of hailstorms that followed. <laughs> yeah. And then when you get back on track, you might experience... A little calm in the yep. storm. And then all of a sudden you forget about the storm because things calm down and you get back into some more folly. And the most I said, okay, this time I'm going to kick it up even greater. Yeah, you hear this? And then you get to a point where you say, okay, I done been through that rough ride. I don't think I like that. Let me just calm myself down. Let me fast. Let me pray. Let me get in the word. Let me seek the most high. Then all of a sudden things start to balance out. Yep. Smooth sailing. Then the test and the trial comes. You don't go through it too well. Then all of a sudden, boom, here comes another storm. Yep. If we were to chronicle our lives and really write things down, and we were honest with ourselves, even those moments where we thought thoughts that we knew weren't right, and we did little things that we knew weren't right, mm -hmm. we will see the parallel between the storms and the folly, the victory and the peace and the righteousness yeah one thing that a very simplistic example i love to share is when i did something that i knew was wrong and how immediately after uh something took place it was it was a time where i see i was one of those children i tried to be as obedient as i could tried to do the best mm -hmm. that i could and one time i tested my mother with just a little hiss and a sigh when she told me to do something. <laughs> and I just quietly said, 
And so immediately after, there was a storm. And that storm was my mother. <laughs> when she came after me. <laughs> came in like a tornado. <laughs> came in like a tornado. And she set the record straight. And see, that's how Yah is sometimes. When we try him, mm -hmm. he will send that storm after us to set the record straight. Because some of us will straighten up and fly right when we go through these things. and yeah. say, oh, oh, he saw that. I didn't know he was watching. Yeah, yeah he was. And he was listening, too. And so he will send that storm immediately after. If you are one who experiences stuff like that, then know for certainty the Most High is on your side. If he's sending that storm, because he says, those whom I love are chastised. And so he is trying to keep us on the straight and narrow, and he will send those storms, and it's for us to listen and obey. That's right. Not for us to go deeper into it and say, well, why would you do this to me? He said, well, why did you do what you did? I told yeah. you what I was going to do, and you didn't take heed. You didn't believe me. So here comes the storm. You know, it's amazing what she's saying about... Um, one thing that I've learned is this here. Y'all don't take you through something and bring you out of it for you to forget it. Mm -hmm. Okay? You hear what I said? Yes. He doesn't do that so that you could just forget it. And all of a sudden, uh, two years and went back, you don't even remember what he did for you. That angers him. Okay? Yes. Why do you think in the scriptures each time y'all did some of the children, he's said, can I put us some stones here? This is a memorial. Y'all remember this place right here? Yes. This is a memorial for what I did for you here. But I find it a shame that when I read this passage in the scriptures, that the children of Israel, after that next generation, they had no idea of what Yah did for them in bringing them out of the land of Egypt. It's like, did the parents even talk to them about this stuff? What happened? That after a hundred years or so, people had, them didn't even remember it no more. This is the kind of thing that's going on in our own lives. you supposed to recollect, you're supposed to remember what Yah has brought you through. You're supposed to think on these things. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to think on them. When you don't take time out to think about what he's done for you, then you you could, I'm telling you right now, Yah doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. He ain't take you through all this stuff so you can sit back and be quiet about it. You're supposed to be remembering this stuff. You're supposed yes. to be witnessing the people about what he did for you. Yes. You ain't supposed to be quiet about it. That's right. You understand? You got to get that in your mind. This is why you, you got to take time out. You gotta, there's, there's a song, when I think of the goodness of Yah and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank Yah for saving me. Yes, hallelujah. You're supposed to think on his goodness and what he's done for you. Yes. David was so, let me tell you something about David. And this is why he was so blessed. Read Psalms. Psalms are songs. A lot of those passages are songs. He made songs about what y'all did for him. Yes. Can you imagine making a song? Yeah, y'all delivered me. From, and he just <laughs> making these songs, you know. Y'all yes. did this for me. Y'all blocked my, he stopped my enemies. They were all in, 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 uh, uh, encamped wow. about me. Yes. And y'all delivered me. That's how he expects us to be. Mm -hmm. You know, not sitting back and, and, and somebody say, oh, y'all ever did something for you? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he did a couple of things. You can't remember nothing. Boy, y'all be like, let me, let me hammer him again <laughs> with some stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. So basically, you know, it's very important that we understand this, you know, that Yah is, is trying to bring us to a place in him. He's trying to get us to a place that we understand that, we, that he's for us. And when he's for us, he's going to bring victories. He's going to have ups and downs. He's going to bring these victories, right? Mm -hmm. But... Those of you that's looking from the other side and looking at this person that's going through, don't despise that person. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't despise it. The person is going through some things. Let me tell you something. person going through, this is why you got to, you, you, you kind of got to um, think about the sheep that went astray. Okay? Remember what he says here? It's like a, a sheep that went astray, right? Now, if a person is like this sheep going astray, well, you know what happens when the sheep goes astray, right? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I could take my sheep and just let them out the gate. And just let them go. Don't feed them no more. Just let them go. He probably wouldn't go far at all. <laughs> he, he'll, go, he'll come back to that gate, you know. But I'm just telling you. But what if he didn't? What if he just decided to just go straight walking up the fields through the, through the, through the, um, um, 
the woods out here and everywhere, right? What do you think gonna happen to them? Something's gonna get a hold of them. <laughs> More likely, a wolf or, or a koi wolf or something is gonna get a hold of them. Are uh, y'all hear what I'm trying to say here? So when you see a person that's gone or straight like that sheep, y'all expect you to go up to them and say, "Hey, look here, let me talk to you about something, okay?" Mm -hmm. If you continue to go out here down this path, I'm telling you, a wolf is gonna get a hold of you. You're gonna meet your destruction if you keep if you go if you go down this path. So you gotta be able to talk to one of y'all's little ones that have gone astray and tell, hey man, come on back. Come on back to the sheepfold. You know, you go out here, man, something's gonna get you, man. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's what's important. <coughs> Hallelujah. I wanted to um address a question that we have here in the chat um by um looks like Bracha Israel. It says what if you're doing things right and you still suffer? Well, there's a number of different things that could be going on. And this is why it's very important to have a balanced, close, and sure relationship with the Most High so that you can identify what is truly happening in your life. Because yes. sometimes the scripture says, Think it not strange concerning fiery trials which go to try you as though some strange thing have happened right that's right now if you go if you know that you're living right but you're still suffering it can be a number of different things happening you could be going through a, a, a test and a trial that the most high has placed upon you to cause you to trust him or to bring you to another level or there could be other things in your life that you're unaware of this is why we do, uh, we talk about different things as it relates to spirits and demons and giving them permission yeah. um, to be in your life, whether directly or indirectly. And we talked one time about having people around you who have a curse upon them and you having them around or having dealings with them could bring that curse upon you. So it's not a simple cut and dry answer um, as to um, you're going through this or you're going through things, but you're still suffering, um, even though you're living righteous, mm -hmm. you <clears throat> having a close relationship with the Most High should be able to go to him and, and talk, talk to him. him. That's the key. And ask him, okay, Father, yeah. what is this that is happening in my life? I'm striving every day to please you. I want to please you more. I'm seeking you. Yeah. I'm serving you. I'm doing right by my brothers and sisters, so something isn't right. Something is not adding up. And when you have that close relationship to, with the Most High, guess what? He is going to show you exactly what is happening in your life. Why is it that you are experiencing uh, the hardships that you're experiencing? Uh, whether it's something in your body, something you're feeling in your body, your um, um, depression or a mental struggle, yes. a financial struggle. Um, a struggle in your family or anything that you could be going through uncertainty. Yes. He is going to show you exactly why you're experiencing this if you have that close relationship with him. Now, you don't know what? See, she hit it on the nail when she said close relationship. Because sometimes if, if the statement you made was um, um, when you know you're doing something, doing things right. How do you know you're doing mm -hmm. things right? Mm hmm. <laughs> See, sometimes we can look at our life and say, well, I know I'm, I'm walking up right. I know I'm doing walking in the right way and all this. And sometimes we might not be. That's why you got to have a, such a close relationship with God's description. There's a way to seem it right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It seems right. So the best thing to do is not judge yourself and say, okay, I know I'm doing things right. I know, but I'm still going through. What I would do in your case, I would say, okay, Father, y'all, talk to him. Father, yeah, what's going on? Because I'm not seeing the fruit that I need to see in my life. Is there something that I'm doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Don't always assume that you're doing everything right. Okay? Assume that, matter of fact, you know, the better way is to actually humble yourself and say, Father, yeah, what am I doing wrong? Exactly. <laughs> yes. What am I doing wrong? There's so, obviously something that I, you, you can't be getting it wrong, Father. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is off, it got to be me, right? Mm -hmm. Look at yourself. Look at your own self. Judge your own self and say, okay, Father, God, show me then. Mm -hmm. Show me where I have gone astray. Show me where I have messed up. Show me why I'm not seeing the fruit. Show me and stay on him. Give him no rest. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Pray and stay on him and, and just draw nigh to him until you get that answer. Because I'm telling you, it is it, the feeling when you get, get a breakthrough through your eye and he shows you the thing and you see it. 
and you make the correction and then things change, I tell you you're gonna be on you gonna be on cloud nine. Mm-hmm. Boy, you're gonna be cutting a step. <laughs> no kidding you, because that it feels so good. Because I know what that's like. I know it's like to go two years and you'll be seeing things happening, you're like, what am I doing wrong? Man, finally, I, I, I mean, I'm reading your word, I'm studying, I'm praying, I'm going to assembly, I'm doing this, doing that, and you, and you, and you're like, what am I doing wrong? Something ain't happening. But boy, when you finally get that prayer through, and the Most High bless you, you'll be like, I mean, you'll be ready to, you'll be on cloud now, you'll be running and shouting and jumping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, that's the attitude to the person who asks that question. Um, that's the attitude that Watchman and I have taken. Um, whenever we go through anything, we never look at Yah and say, well, I'm doing everything right. Why am I going through this? We always mm-hmm. ask, show me what I'm doing wrong. That is the yeah. attitude that most of us um, don't really want to take because we perceive that everything we're doing is right. Most people don't ca- really can't see their own wrong. Yeah. I don't care how simple something is that I'm going through. I always assume that if I'm going through this and it don't feel yeah. good to me, it's got to be something that <laughs> Yah has brought on me and is allowing for a particular yes. reason. Yes. And so I go to him and I'm like, Father, I'm sorry, whatever it is. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, I was having um, some very strange back pains, very strange I don't usually get, you know, sometimes I'll get back pain if I work too hard or something and I'm lifting something and I know I shouldn't have lifted something. But I had a very strange back pain that was different than something you get from lifting. Yes. And right away, I I said, Father, I'm sorry, whatever it is I did <laughs> to bring this on me. Mm-hmm. Even laying in the bed on either side, it was just really hurting. And that's not something that I typically experience. So... I immediately felt like I did something that I need to ask the Most High to show me and reveal to me, and I'm sorry, whatever it is. That is the attitude that we must take. A headache, a toothache, regardless to what it is, that don't line up with living in Shalom. That don't line up with being made whole. To me, being made whole is I'm healed, right? My body's supposed to feel good. So if it doesn't feel good, what did I do wrong? And so... That's the first thing you want to do to the sister who asked the question is um, ask the Most High what it is that you need to fix, what yeah. needs to be purged out, what needs to be straightened out. Because the Most High, he will definitely reveal, to, reveal that to you if you come to him with a humble heart, knowing that he doesn't get anything wrong. Yeah, you know what's funny? I got a confession to make. <laughs> 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 I got a confession to make. Um, I want to say probably about a couple of months ago, um, we had so many projects, so many things we were doing, and I was getting really just tired, just really getting work. It was extremely hot. And I began to let a little complaining thought come to my head about having so much that I had to do, right? Trying to get this ready, trying to get that ready. We got goats coming. We had this, you know, just so many things I had to do. And... I, I let the thought continue to grow to the point where I just I found myself just really in this in this way where I was like, okay, all right, let me go do this. All right, let me go do this. And then you get so tired at night, too tired at night to do this and do that, you know, and it was just, just got to the point to where it, I was verbalizing it mentally. Tell you what y'all did. Yeah, I said, okay. So you get tired of the work, okay. Back pain came on me so bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a back pain like I never experienced before in my life. I could not walk Mm -hmm. for a week. I could not get up and walk hardly. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. Mm -hmm. And then, when I complained about the back pain, y'all said, well, let's add some foot pain to it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying and so after I laid up in that bed I thought about all the projects I wanted to do and I was like man I need to get out this bed I want to get busy again I mean it made it to the point where I was I wanted to get out of that bed so bad 
I said, I need to get up out of this bed. I want to get over and do this. I want to do that. Man, the, 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 this need done, that need done. Things get undone. I need to get up out of this bed. And then I said, I thought about I said, man, you did this to me because I was running my mouth. Yes. I really was running, <laughs> I was running my mind. Running your mind. <laughs> I was running my mind, and it got to the point I, I, when I finally was able to start walking again. He hit the ground running. Woo! <laughs> I said, okay, okay, let's get this done, baby. Come on, baby, let's get this stuff done. Let's go on and knock this out. Because I know that y'all just don't like certain things. Now, sometimes we all can get, we ain't not perfect. We all can get in these ways and allow these thoughts to fester, right? Mm -hmm. But I learned whenever, whenever something come on me, I look at me. I go, okay, what did I done did now? You know, bump your head, boom. Oh, man. Why did y'all allow that? I must have done something. <laughs> you know, no kidding you. I look at everything. Yes. If ain't nothing going right, it's because I ain't right. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. So if I want things to go right, I got to I gotta seek y'all and say, okay, Father, y'all, what I need to do, what do I need to, to do? get this to happen the way I need to happen. And what, one thing that we have to do for one another um, as a helpmate or if you, uh, towards your wife or your children or your children towards you or you towards your children, if you see a person that is getting too far off into something, complaining, murmuring, grumbling, yeah. we have to admonish one another. Yeah. And so sometimes if I say certain things, my husband may say something to me, give me a scripture. Sometimes he say certain things. I say, you got to speak to that thing. Speak life. Speak life, yeah. baby. Speak life, you know, even with the back issues. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even like to admit. Um, I'll, I'll tell my husband or the children, I'll say, okay, y'all, I'm feeling some kind of way today, okay? And I don't like to really say what it is, so y'all got to bear with me, <laughs> you know, just not to admit it. But they know what I mean. If I'm laying there and I say I'm feeling some kind of way, you know what I'm talking about, just to keep that admission thing off of it. But one thing we have to do is encourage one another. We have to say, look, well, you got you got to speak life. If you're feeling yeah. a certain way, um, it's probably best not to say that. Okay, just say by his stripes I'm healed. Yeah. Um, just, just be a little bit quiet. And I know yep. the, the temptation to speak on it um, is there because you're feeling something, but it's better to just be quiet. Yeah. And that's one thing that I, I practice a lot. When my husband is going through certain things, I'm like. Sometimes the pains be so bad. You <laughs> be screaming and stuff. Kids like, what's going on with daddy? You know, but I'm telling you. <laughs> I said, I said, Father, yeah, I don't ever want to go through that again. That mm -hmm. was that was by far the worst thing I've been through. Mm -hmm. You know, it was that bad. And so I said, you know, that's, I can't be going through that no more. So I, I got to the point where I, now I'm like, hey, I'm out there. She can hardly get me in sometimes from work. <laughs> I said, honey, you need to come on in. I'll be I'm like. It's getting dark and the mosquitoes are out. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And so it's like. I've learned that we all learn from time to time that you know when things happen to us, it's always for a reason. Y'all always allow y'all allow things for reasons. You know he's trying to get us to a certain point. Now, uh, someone asked, so are we saying that God is causing pain? No, we're not saying that at all. We, we're saying He allows it. Yeah. We actually speak it. You know how the scripture says, "Speak those things as though they are." Uh, whatsoever man speaks. Those things will be manifested in his life. So if you're constantly complaining, it's not that the Most High is causing the pain. He's allowing the pain. He, he allows circumstances <laughs> to bring about that pain. So right, in other words, because your mouth is yeah, reaching for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, it. and not just your mouth reaching for it. You could do a sin and y'all will allow yes, things to come on yes. you. You understand me? You could do something. You uh, Complaining is a, is a sinful thing, murmuring and complaining. And so y'all, sometimes you could... You could do something, and Yah can't will allow you to go through something. He open the door and go, yeah, yeah, get him, get him. He's going astray, get him. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But what do you think a sheep dog do, huh? A sheep is to keep the sheep in line, right? Sheep dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sheep, the sheep, as long as they in the field doing what they supposed to do, that dog ain't gonna bother them, right? But that sheep get off, the man master say, get, get him. And that dog come chase that sheep right back into the thing. Now, the dog may even snip and bite at the sheep a little to scare them, right? Mm -hmm. now, all I'm saying is, y'all, sometimes he does just that. He'll sick that dog on you in a minute. Get him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going out of line. Get him. He'll let things happen to you 
to get you in in the right on the right path. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. We know all things work together for our good, right? That's right. It says all things, right? Mm -hmm. That means sickness, everything. Everything works for your good. It's for your good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. This is a good scripture here. Matthew, Matthew chapter, chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. <clears throat> when the son of Adam shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of glory of his glory. And before him shall he shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides sheep from goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on the right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me meat I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and ye took me in naked and ye clothed me I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Adonai, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick, or <clears throat> in prison, and come unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Amen. I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left, left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also say, answer him, saying, Adonai, when did we see you hungry or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Amen, I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now, it goes back to what I said, right? This is how people making themselves Yah's enemy. Ain't that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? Because they did it to them, they were doing it to Yah. There it is in the Word. Mm -hmm. You see? He's saying this is how people are making themselves his enemy. Because you done became an enemy of one of my least. You became his enemy. Mm -hmm. You see, look at the word. It's right there just as clear as day what he's saying here. You understand? And so we got to understand this is the message he's trying to say. So when we say, uh, uh, whosoever be a friend of the world is the enemy of Elohim, <laughs> there it is. Yes. You become his enemy because even you can even have a friendship attached to the world and become his enemy. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that means we got to check ourselves out, right? We got to check our life out. We got to look at our life with a magnifying glass like this all the time. Analyze your, your life. Judge yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Okay? Mm -hmm. Quit looking at other people. The problem is you're always looking at other people. Mm -hmm. Get your eyes off other people. Get your eye off of this guy and what he's doing. Get your eye on you. Put your eye on you. See where you going. Mm -hmm. You so busy watching where they going, you about to crash. Mm -hmm. You understand me? You can't drive down the road watching the other guy's car. Huh? Pay attention to your vehicle. See where you going. Mm -hmm. huh? You about to run out of gas. Ain't he put gas in your car. You about to run out of gas. So busy worrying about this other guy driving. You understand? Mm -hmm. Quit worrying about. Look over here. Man, look at him. He's driving around in the Bentley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not for that kind of stuff. I, I'm not even into none of that kind of stuff. But I'm just giving you a, 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 an example of how people are. You can see somebody driving out something better than what you got, and you looking at him so good. Mm. I wonder, well, why can he afford something like that? Bam, you done crashed now. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. you can't keep your eye on your own self, on your own, what you're doing in your life. Watch you. Huh? If you watch yourself close enough, I guarantee you, you will begin to see things. You, you, it's almost like a person. It's almost like a gardener, right? As long as the gardener got somebody else out there fooling with the garden, he don't know what's going on, right? But then when you get out there and you get to dealing with it, you say, oh, man. I didn't realize I had all these weeds right here. Let me get these weeds out of here. Man, look at my tomatoes. Man, I got to get these on some sticks, right? Man, what's going on over here? I got to, you know what I'm saying? Because now you're involved in your own garden, right? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That's how you got to be with your own heart, with your own life. You got to deal with your own self. Just like the person said, work out your own salvation and fear and trembling. Fear and trembling of what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you supposed to fear and tremble? Judgment. Judgment. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Not making it in. Mm -hmm. Right? You got to work out your own salvation. Okay? Quit worry about your brother's salvation. Work out your own. Get your own self together. Hallelujah. One thing I thought about is if a person really examined their, their own selves like the scripture said, there are things that you do, things that you think about, things yeah. that you watch, and yeah. just stuff like that. Many of us, when it's our own selves doing certain things, we get, we don't see the harm in it. But as soon as we see somebody else doing the exact same thing, then it jumps out to us. And then you have to you have to examine yourself and say, wait a minute, I do that too. Yeah. But it sticks out to you if somebody else does it. That's because we self righteous. That's how a lot of people live their lives. They actually live their lives thinking of something because a, a good example of that is a scripture that we share all the time mm -hmm. when David um, was being talked to by the prophet <laughs> Nathan, Nathan yeah. Yeah. and um, Nathan was explaining to him something that uh, another person, that he was just explaining that someone did, something that someone did. And as David listened to that, he was so infuriated by the things that this person did yeah. that he pronounced the judgment of death. Yeah, the he man says, that, "Such a yeah. man who did this thing, yeah, shall surely be put to death." Right. But then, when it was brought to his attention that it is what he did, then all of a sudden, yeah, David humbled himself. See, that's the difference. He humbled himself. He knew. He's like, "Oh man." Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. But a lot of people today. <clears throat> They'll say, well, the difference is when it, when, when it comes to their own selves, <laughs> <laughs> they can't see it. And so this is why we have to bring ourselves to a place of repentance where it's yeah. a daily thing. Yes. Where we can acknowledge and we can say, okay, you know what? Yep. This ain't right. That's not right. I was so busy paying attention to this person. Like yeah. Watchman said, you're watching how this person is driving and you crash. Because yep. you're doing the same thing. But you're paying attention to their mistake and yeah. not your own. Not your own And so mistake. the Most High will allow you to crash. That's right. In your sin. You know, self-righteousness is one of those things. I'm telling you, it, it has always plagued us as a people. It has plagued us so bad. Yes. And you could tell a, a, right, a, a person self-righteous, they're always trying to point out in the scriptures where they're righteous. Mm -hmm. You know, look here, I do this, I do that, I don't eat this, I don't eat that. They're always pulling all that stuff out right in the scriptures. And they say, yeah, but if y'all was to put you in a magnifying glass, he'd be like, but you do eat this and you do eat that. This is off, that's off, right? But a right, self-righteous person is always trying to, trying to make themselves right using the scriptures. So, see, I, 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 me, 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 <laughs> right, I, 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 walking upright, I'm righteous, y'all, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, look, y'all, got my fringes, hey, look at me, y'all, that's, that's what right, self-righteous people do, you understand me, but the, the better thing to do is not even get into all of that, mm -hmm. you understand me, if you, if you keeping his commandments, good, if mm -hmm. you're walking upright, 
good. You don't have to sound the horn on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get what I'm saying? You don't have to sound the horn, and you don't have to. I have to try to make yourself look like you're such in a um, righteous state among people. Don't you know y'all see right through this? He, he sit there and say, oh, "Oh, okay, yeah, you looked the part in front of these people here, but let me put something on you, and your and your true colors will show." Mm-hmm. Woo! You hear what I said? Y'all can put something on you and make your true color show. Looking all right, looking like a peacock. <laughs> all the beautiful colors and feathers, you know. And y'all let that let that flame get on you. You look like a, a skint chicken when he done with you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Y'all burn you down, burn them feathers around. You look like a skint chicken. This is why I want to admonish those who um, they say coming into the truth. Of course, is more to the truth than knowing that you're an Israelite. But a lot of people coming into the truth, as they call it. Um, we want to admonish you that you don't fall into this religious way about you because a lot of our people have this Israelite pride. They are so proud of finding their true heritage after all of this time that they allow themselves to fall into the trap and the snare of pride. Okay, We can't just look at pride as something that's only attached to the Gentiles. You know, the scripture talks about how pride comes before a fall. That's not just talking about Gentiles. It's talking about our people as well. And this pride that we get in knowing who we are is very, very dangerous. It's dangerous because many times we get proud of ourselves because of how we dress and because of how we look and we're keeping the Shabbat and even with the Shabbat you got people arguing back and forth about I keep the lunar Shabbat, I keep this I, and, and they're uh, putting down the people who keep Shabbat on <laughs> on the seventh day. It's just so much of this and it's like okay first we're prideful against the Gentiles oh we're Israelites look at us, we are <laughs> yeah. royal priesthood <clears throat> A chosen generation. We get prideful about that, but then among ourselves we get prideful because we're thinking that our way of doing things is better than this assembly or that group over there. And so it goes from bad to worse. None of it is righteousness. It's all counterproductive spiritually. And so we got to make sure That's that right. in this walk we're not allowing ourselves to get the big head. Yeah. Because I, we, we've seen a lot of big-headed Hebrew Israelites. And when I say <laughs> big-headed, I mean they are so proud of their nationality to the point where they have completely X'd out the Most High. Yeah. He don't yeah. exist in their lives, although they think he does. They think he does because yep. they've made the prize being the Israelite or the chosen seed. But that is not the prize. The prize is being back in your father's good graces. Yeah. Being on his good side again. Because remember, he turned his back on us because yeah. of our sins. He broke us off. Yeah. He broke us off. He said, look, I'm going to cut you off and I'm going to um, open the door for others. And so don't make the pride being who you are or knowing who you are. The prize, should I say, make the prize the <laughs> fact that you were able to find Yahuwah again. And that he says... Seek me ten times greater than before the fall. Yeah. That is the prize. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's something when I think about a lot of different things. I'm telling you, boy, you can hear it in people's voices. You can hear it in their conversations, in their comments, in their chats. You can hear it in a person's tone where they are. You can literally hear If you just, if you tune your ears and you really listen to a person, you can tell where they are. You can literally tell it. Okay? Mm-hmm. This is why you got to stay humble. The, the scripture said, it didn't say it, that you should exalt yourself, does it? No. It says humble yourself and what? He will exalt you. He, if you're going to get, time. let me tell you something, if you're going to get exalted, it's going to come one or two ways. Either you're going to exalt yourself or one or, th- or three ways. Either you're going to exalt yourself, which, you know, you're going to end up being brought down. Satan is going to exalt you, or you, you're going to still end up being brought down, or y'all can exalt you, and you'll stay up. That's right. Take your pick. <laughs> it's one of three. Take your pick, right? Mm-hmm. Either you going to eat those two other ways, you're going to be brought down. I guarantee you. But if you just sit back, take the low road, stay humble, then y'all start to lift you up. You'll lift you up so fast, and you'll be sitting there like, wow, thank you, Father. Mm-hmm. He'll bless you. 
But you got to take the low road, stay humble, and let him do it. Because when he exalts you, can't nothing stop you. Don't scripture say, if y'all be for you, who could be against who could come you? hell or high water, you will be able to stand there and ain't nothing going to take you down. Nothing. And folks sit there and say, man, this is an oak. <laughs> His roots are down in the water. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's like an oak. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't no, the wind ain't taking him up. Because Yah has established him. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. Huh? Yah has established that person. And what he and what he is to do. Mm -hmm. His ministry is of Yah because Yah has established him. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. You understand? You want to be established in Yah. Be rooted so deep, because I'm telling you, it's a scary thing to have something happen in your life and you feel your roots come up out of the ground as if you about to just tumble over. Or blow away. Mm -hmm. It's a scary thing when some things happen in your life to cause you to doubt so bad to you sit there and you wonder if you're going to even make it. Mm -hmm. I've been shaking like that before in my life. Mm -hmm. I have been shaking like that. My wife has been shaking like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so that's enough to make me say, okay, keep these roots down in that ground. Keep that water on him. Keep that meditation flowing because that's what he's talking about. You know, mm -hmm. my meditation when he said that. Mm -hmm. The tree planted by the rivers of water to do a meditate in this word day and night, right? Huh? Day and night you're meditating, right? That's what it's about. You understand? And so when you're that tree planted, then you, you, can, you can gain a strength in Yah and let Yah will exalt you because he's going to keep you growing, right? And before you know it, you used to be a little old tree, just like that um, maple tree mm -hmm. <laughs> that we had planted this maple tree a long time ago. And that maple tree had grown up so huge that we sit back looking at it like, man, in, a, in only like a, a few short years. Mm -hmm. Because it stayed planted, stayed yes. rooted, got water, got sun, and it just took off. Hallelujah. One thing I don't want uh, you all to, to think of is um, humility being weakness. A lot of times the world will associate it being humble or being uh, having humility as weakness. Yep. And so we think we all have to go around barking and biting off heads to prove that we're strong. <laughs> you don't have to do that. That humility is something that it takes a lot of strength to possess. Yeah. It actually takes more strength to possess humility than it does to be um, just a, a barking dog. Wow. You hear what she just said? It takes more strength to humble yourself. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that is what the Most High requires of us, you know, um, that that humility. Sometimes you feel like you're uh, giving in or whatever. Um, like like it says, a soft answer turns away wrath, right? Most people say, well, you know, I'm not going to let nobody talk to me like that. Okay. And so you think, oh, he chickened out or she chickened out because they uh, turned away wrath with that soft answer. But the Most High... He looks at things a lot differently than we do. I, you know, I didn't understand that at one time. <laughs> my wife too. I didn't understand that. That that that. Well, she just quoted went right over my head. <laughs> you know, I did not understand back in it. The day it yeah, did. back <laughs> in the days, it went right over my head. At one time, I didn't understand that. I thought that you know, especially if you if you're talking with a person about something and you have a disagreement, and they get loud. You're supposed to get just as loud as they get, right? And they get louder, you get louder too, you know. And they get they get aggressive, you get aggressive right with them. You know, I, I used to be just like that. After a while, I'd say a few things, person, they don't agree with me. I said, okay, all right. Go on your way, dude. Mm -hmm. That's how I am now. But back in the days, I was ready for that argument. No, we all going to be ready to fight after a while. <laughs> <laughs> be ready to throw some fists after a while, you know. Come on, come on, let's go. You know, but it's like after a while I got to the point I started seeing things. I started to see how the devil was used things. He would use those contentions to cause the vision and, and and just you get the devil involved and all kinds of stuff. And I had to learn the hard way that it's better than should say agree with your adversary quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't say fight your adversary quickly. Huh? Did it say rise up a standard against your adversary? Huh? It said agree with him quickly, don't it, y'all? It said agree with him quickly. Right? It's a reason for that. There's a reason for it. It's yeah. a very wise reason. So again, that is not weakness. That is nope. that is actually wisdom. Yep. It's not weakness, it's wisdom. 
So <clears throat> those of you who think you have to have a show of strength by being the loudest, the biggest, and the baddest, <laughs> you totally missed the point. <laughs> Yah's word says, a soft answer turns away wrath. You can walk away and be alive, okay? Or you can um, let things or allow things to escalate and you will lose your life. Yeah. I mean, a lot of that, think about the situations that happen sometimes with law yeah. enforcement. Yeah. And you see it all know, the time, yeah. And we know that in some cases, you even if you do humble yourself, things are going to go a certain way because we're dealing with people who are reprobate, okay? Yeah. But there are situations where if you just zip your lips... Yep. That you will walk away and be just fine. But that yep. when you want to rise up in your manly power instead of um, Yah's power, because you want to prove who you are, um, the scripture tells you, okay, if a soft answer turns away wrath, what do you think a harsh answer does? It encourages wrath. It brings wrath. Because yep. you're going to have two angry people. So it solves nothing. So let's look at those scriptures of instruction and understand what it means to be truly humble in the sight of the Most High. Because one thing that I notice in this, what they call the awakening, is a lot of our people are out here, they mm -hmm. are just, there's like an angry spirit. And we're going to, I'm going to get into this more on my channel because... I like that there. It's like David prayed crazy. Yeah, David played <laughs> crazy for that moment, and that was using wisdom. Mm -hmm. But one thing I'm going to cover more on my channel is how our people... Um, are actually giving in to a very dark spirit yes. in this awakening. And this is why you see a lot of people leaving, um, bowing out. They don't want to have nothing to do with this. And, and you'll have those who say, well, they were never with Yah in the first place. But no, that's not the case. Yah yeah. said, woe unto you shepherds who scatter my sheep. A shepherd is not just a person who is a pastor. It can be anyone who is trying to teach others the word. Yeah. Okay. And you're using fiery darts of the wicked to try to gain y'all's people. That's not wisdom. <laughs> it sure ain't. The scripture says, he that winneth souls. He that winneth souls is wise, right? And so if you yeah. are not winning souls, but you're causing people to go astray, or the people that are clinging to you are just like you, brutish in nature, evil, wicked, you got to ask yourself, what's going on? But in many cases, people can't even see it. Most yeah. of the people that are brutish and, and uh, feel with all of this anger and malice towards everybody, they can't even see that they're wicked. They think that they have the fury of Yah in them, but really they have an evil spirit that has attached itself to them mm -hmm. and is causing Yah's sheep to scatter. One thing I've seen so many times, I've seen brothers witnessing the people, and they'll be witnessing the people, and you you got to understand something, right? Okay, you're trying to tell somebody that you're on the right path, right? Mm hmm. I'm trying to tell you I'm on the right path, right? And they're not completely listening to you, mm -hmm. but then you start to get loud, right? And a little aggressive with your tone. Well, what do you think that person? You think they're gonna? Oh, oh you know what? I'm gonna be just like you. Huh? I want to join whatever you you screaming at them or whatever, getting all loud at the person, and they, they really want to join you now, right? You understand what I'm saying? There's a way to witness the people. You can't witness the people. Just, just like I said, I say it all the time, right? It, it, you, it, when a snake comes at you, he looks like a snake. He's hissing like a snake. He's acting like a snake. A lion, if he comes at you, he's going to be growling and all of that, right? Huh? You know what you're going to expect from him, right? You can't you can't, he says, harmless as doves. Wise as serpents. Wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. That's why whenever I talk to people like at work or wherever else I might be, and I get the sense that they might be disagreeing with me, if I still want to talk to them about what it is I'm talking to them about, instead of getting all loud and telling them condescendingly and rudely why they're wrong, I'll look at them and say, you know, I can understand why you would believe the way you believe. However, you can't forget certain this, that, and the other, and I'll try to reason with them. In that exactly. Sense. And what that does is that makes them say, okay, they don't feel stupid. They don't feel like you're trying to say that they're stupid for believing <laughs> what they believe. You, can, you can't insult a person and expect them to want to hear anything you got to say. You know, we out trying to win the loss. And we insult them. You, you just another stupid two-thirds person. Because they don't want to hear you. 
Huh? You ever given them? You look how you talking to them. Look how you acting to them. You can't talk to them like you can't. You can't. Oh, man, I, I mean, it's, to me, it's common sense, mm-hmm. right? Huh? You can't insult a person and expect them to hear anything you got to say, right? You got to be wise. You got to be like that dove. Dove ain't going to come to you hissing all crazy like a viper. You see a viper, you're going to run, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when we say you have to um, uh, speak to people a certain way, the, there are things in the word that will be offensive, Okay, right. things in the word. We're not talking about people who are just offended by the truth. We're talking about you personally offending people, telling them they're going to hell, um, calling them the part of the two thirds club. Even the way you say, even say things and, to and, them, and, yeah. and talking down mm-hmm. at them, and, yeah. and, and talking evil towards them, calling them out their name. Um, like we've seen some of the brothers talking about the women and their weaves and their um, their. Um, uh, different things, how they dress, uh, calling them, calling them dogs, and yeah. calling them the, uh, uh, the a whore or whatever. You can't win people like that. It's different when you are uh, quoting the word. When the word convicts a person of their sins, it's because you're using the word. But if you are hurling personal attacks at people because of how they're dressed and how they look and all this kind of stuff, that is when you are not being wise. But if they if they're offended because of the truth, then it's nothing you can do about that. Okay, yeah. if they're offended because the, the word tells them no, that it's not okay to um, to um, like uh, men liking men and women liking women. When the word says that's not okay, uh, it is what it is, right? If they're offended by that, that's one thing. But if you are hurling personal assaults at people, that is when you're not using wisdom and trying to minister to people because even yeah. in a situation <clears throat> such as that we have had uh, people um, who have contacted us directly and they have those tendencies okay and the way we have dealt with them we didn't start calling them um, the F word and the, uh, the G word <laughs> and all. we didn't start doing all of that we just tell them what the word says about these things and that there is a spirit that has caused them to feel the way that they are feeling. And when you get to calling people um, just just different things, I'm not trying to get off into the, um, the whole LGBT thing Great. in this video. I'm just trying to make a point that when you start hurling personal insults, you are being counterproductive. Just speak and teach the word and leave it at that. And if they are offended by the word, then so be it. Let, let, let me say something to you, right? Okay. Now, let's say you, there's a religious person you're trying to witness to. And let's say it's one of them people who strongly believe in the name of J.C., right? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, you already know if you come right at that name like that, you what's the point of even trying to talk to them, right? Mm-hmm. If you know you come right up, you can you gonna leave. They gonna you gonna you gonna you go, they gonna be gone, right? So now you just wasted your time and even trying to talk to them, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a better way. Mm-hmm. There's a better way. It reminds me one day we were in we were in Walmart and um, this woman was I was passing by this older lady. Now you know older people that's into Jesus Christianity, Christianity <laughs> yeah. trying to talk to them about some truth is very hard, you mm-hmm. know. I would born up Baptist. Yeah. I die Baptist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard to talk to him, right? Yeah. But the lady saw my necklace. She said, wow. She said, um, I've seen that before. What does that mean? And I said, um, oh, this is the, the father's name. You know, our father in heaven? I said, that's his name in, in Paleo Hebrew. She said, oh, that's nice. I said, his name is actually Yah, like this. She said, Yah? I said, yeah, his name is really Yah. And she said, Really? I said, yeah. I said, that's why you, when you praise them, you say hallelujah. We asked them, we I asked said, her what is the highest yeah. praise. And she's like, how do you, and we, we went on just talking to her about it, whatever. I didn't get into fact, you know that name, Jesus. I didn't get all into that because I know she's going to reject it, right? Mm-hmm. But when I, when I talked to her, me and my wife talked to her about the name Yah, and that that's, his, that's really his name when you see the names Jeremiah and Isaiah and Zechariah and Zephaniah. All we see all these names with I A H on it. It was really saying Y A H. The I A H it was not pronounced like that. 
it's how and how they in in true Hebrew is written Y A H. And so when we when we said that to the person that these names mean something, look up what the name don't uh, Jeremiah I think it means Yahweh rise. And so when you look at that, it's like wow. And so when we had a chance to talk to that lady, you should have saw the look on her face. She was like, I didn't know that. She's like, wow, like oh my goodness. And we didn't even have to say nothing about the name JC. We didn't have to come against it. Didn't have to put up our dukes. And... <laughs> didn't have to do none of that. You know. So now the her the seed has been planted in her, and now all it takes y'all to just just keep on watering. Send somebody else to water. Somebody else will be able to water it. She ain't got nobody yelling at her, telling her that you keep on off that false god name. And I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm saying? Yes. Hallelujah. The, the scripture says, Israel has a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And because they are so zealous, they are, they are sending people to hell. Yeah. Telling people that they're going to burn. They're part of the two-thirds. Oh, you use it. You call it on that false name. And now many of them are shaving off. Um, the New Testament. <laughs> yeah. At first, they were shaving off just Yahusha, and now they done shaved off the whole New Testament. And see, yeah. that was a trick of the enemy too. That was a trick of the enemy. This yeah. is why the scripture talks about um, um, uh, here a little, there a little. It says precept yeah. upon precept. The enemy has made it to where they divided the books. They said Old and New Testament, and so we think that they're two separate books. But when you look at some of the books that were removed, they actually string right together, okay? And our enemies divided and called it Old and New Testament. So now that's given people who don't really desire the truth, people who lack spiritual understanding, that's given them a way to try to discredit the New Testament. Yes. Not knowing or realizing that even in the Old Testament that there is error. You have to understand the error is not with Yah. It is in the people who translated what they call both the Old and the New Testament. And people who took out chunks of books to make it seem like it was something totally different going on. It was never meant to be called Old and New Testament. Um, I saw someone talking about this um, on Facebook the other day. It was actually an old <coughs> covenant and a renew, renewed covenant. Okay, Meaning there were some things that after Hamashiach... Um, die for our sins no longer do we need to sacrifice bulls and goats to cleanse us from our sins there were some things that the renewed covenant did for us so that we don't need animal sacrifice anymore to cleanse us from our sins there are other things as well how much had then come and die for us to um, have the freedom to eat what we want and do what we want that, those are the lies yeah. of Christianity Christianity have you thinking that his death for our sins was to give us carte blanche to do whatever we want. All we have to do is say forgive me because we have an advocate. Just pray over any kind of meat. I don't care what kind of meat it is. Just pray over it. You can eat it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know you don't believe that, right? You know they, they those that preach it don't believe it, right? But they say, say, it, 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 say it in a minute. You just pray over it. You'd be all right. Okay, go get one of them Amazon frogs. You know them bright Amazon frogs that try to cook and eat one of them. The ones You'd be you dead. Touch, you you dead. can't even touch them. Yeah. So, See, notice people who talk like that, though. They don't say you can pray over no elephant ears and eat those. They don't say that you can pray over <laughs> rat's tails and eat those. But it's always the stuff that pleases their flesh. They like that pork, so they're going to say you can pray over that. But they don't pray over dog meat and eat that. Yeah, exactly. So this, again, shows you yeah. the unrighteousness of men and women, whether they are um, Christians, Muslims, or Hebrew Israelites. People determine what they deem as righteous and they say that this is the truth right here. Yeah. This is why you have all of these different religions because people say, well, this is all that I'm convicted by. I've heard people say, well, I'm not convicted by that, so I don't adhere to that. It doesn't matter whether you're convicted by it or yeah. not. The truth is what it is, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Somebody say, or oh, a skunk burger. <laughs> skunk burger. <laughs> <laughs> that sound like a horrible burger right there, that boy. That sound like something so detestable, <laughs> you can't even cook the fumes out of it. You sure can't. That sound horrible right there, a skunk burger. That got to be the worst, you know. But it, it, it's just, it's funny to me that it's so much, though. You know, we, we all the stuff we're talking about, man, 
But you just you gotta you gotta understand you gotta be a certain way. You gotta be balanced. Balance. I I talk about balance a lot. You gotta be well balanced in the scriptures and in Yah, yes. in your walk, in your understanding. You gotta be balanced. Only Yah can give you that balance. But you just gotta you gotta seek for that balance. Uh, you know, first time I begin to understand what what it meant to be well balanced, it's something. And and when you when you have that well balanced, you you don't you don't easily get tipped over. But if you're not balanced correctly, you 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 get tipped over in a the minute. The first wind that blows. <laughs> yeah, you know you gotta have that right balance. Like this tripod here, I I, don't, I can't stand this tripod. It's so weak and unbalanced and just you can't. I can't even walk by too close. You mm-hmm. know, or fall over. But it's, it's you got to be balanced right. Mm-hmm. You understand my, what I'm saying? You got to be in your life, in your walk. You got to be balanced right. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, this has been a blessing. Um, but do you, do you see now how a person can become Yah's enemy mm-hmm. because they're going against things that Yah has set in order, and they don't even realize they're going against Yah. Mm-hmm. You know, don't even realize it. I like what uh, Trudy Shepherd says here. How can someone prey on things that Yah has condemned? We see a lot of that, you know, um, yeah. amongst Christians and Hebrew Israelites, where yeah. people things that Yah have said no to, very clear in Scripture. Yeah. Don't do this. This is an abomination. This yeah. is sin. But people are making their own declaration, saying, "Well, that was back then." Yeah. But today. It's not sin because Yahusha, or if you're a Christian, Jesus died for that. So it's no longer an abomination. And so this is why the error of man continues to increase because they have established and are establishing their own righteousness. Yeah. If you remember the scripture, the word when it says, Yah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You will look at a person like they're crazy when yeah. they say that something that Yah said was an abomination thousands of years ago you look at them like they're crazy they say it's no longer an abomination how can something no longer be an abomination you know it's, it's the way they rationalize themselves in mm-hmm. the scriptures they say well Yahushua the blood he died for it and so his blood cleanses it that ain't that ain't the word that that meat that's ain't that means. stuff ain't getting clean oh, and then I, I've learned the hard way I learned I had to learn it the hard way because I was praying over stuff and eating stuff years ago. This is years ago. And was getting sick off that stuff. And I was like, if I'm praying over it, like the word say, it's the word says sanctified by the word and prayer. I said, this stuff each time I eat is making me sick. You know, something is wrong with this, you know. And that's when I began to question things. I said, you know what? I, I'm beginning to think that this stuff is still unclean. Mm-hmm. You know, you ain't no amount of prayer going to sanctify that meat. You understand me? We we get things mixed up. You're you're uh, what people are doing is kind of like um, um, it's relating to sin. When he says the blood cleanses, it cleanses from sin. You understand what I'm saying? It cleanses you from sin. It don't cleanse worms out of food. Okay, that's not in the scripture. Okay. The blood of Yahushua Mashiach and prayer is not going to get the, you ain't going to sit there and pray over that meat and it gets flowing with worms and poison and you just watch it just vanish right before your eyes. That ain't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? What's why they telling you cook everything? As a matter of fact, go get a package of meat and just read on it. If you get it from the grocery store, just read what it say on it. It tells you right then and there that this food may contain bacteria, Right? They can be harmful to your health. Please cook it completely through. They tell you on every package of meat, that's the law now. You know why? The USDA made it a law that every package of meat that's being sold must have that label on it. Right? Because they know that it has worms and stuff in this food. Even in hamburger and other foods that you just get from the store... It says it on that. You go get organic meat from the store and read the package. It'll say the same thing on that package too. Don't it? Mm-hmm. Same exact thing. This food may contain bacteria. So you got to understand what's going on, right? Understand what's going on. Now, Consuelo has a question here that I think is an excellent question uh-huh. uh, to ask and to put on the table. 
they ask, what if your family earns their living by pork and your finances are tied to them? Man. That is a good question, family. I mean, I already know the answer to that, but a question like that deserves a very thorough answer. And probably, um, we can probably include that in our Family Life series. If you can contact yeah. us on our website, um, Watchmen Reports, or our, our email contact at watchmenreports.com. Um, you, you requested that we email you. It's probably best that you email us, family. <laughs> I'm going to just keep it real. Yeah. Um, and, and put someone else put a, a Family Life series in the title uh, for something that they want us to cover in that series. So please do that yeah. if you want us to cover that particular topic because um, it's difficult for us to just email people just randomly or whatever. But if you have a particular request... And you put that in the title, we can take a look at it. Yeah. But um, I think that's a really good question because um, a lot of, it's not just food, not just people selling yeah. pork, but there are a number of different things you have to ask yourself. You can be working if you a job are promoting somewhere. something yeah. that we know is against the laws of Yah, how are we to deal with that? Yeah. You that be, is an excellent question. Yeah, you could be working at, um, at a store, mm -hmm. right, a cashier, mm -hmm. and hear people bringing pork to the counter. <laughs> Yeah, the, the rabbit hole you know, goes deeper, family. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. here's somebody who got a pack of cigarettes they hand you, you know, tobacco and all this stuff, you know. Mm. It's all kinds of things. So, yes. you get what I'm saying? It's really, it's really, I'm going to be honest with you. This is why, that when you look at the scripture and it says that in the last days, the the, the, the virgins would be in darkness, 12 o'clock midnight when the cries made darkness all around. I see it, y'all. It's darkness everywhere. It's hard to do anything. Let me be honest with you about something, right? If you think that you've gone a day and you haven't done anything, period, right? If y'all was to actually shine a light and show you, you would be shaking your head like, oh, man. It may be pork in that very computer you looking at. <laughs> you looking through it, the, it may be in that plastic. You understand me? It may be a, a incantation. It could be somebody. It could be a demon company that have produced it, like Sony. And you sitting up there with the thing. You you typing on a plan on doing stuff with it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that's how wicked they have gotten with this stuff. Is, we're surrounded. We're by surrounded it. by it. This is why we need prayer. This is why we got to stay humble. And this is why we got to understand that Yah is just going to have to give us grace. Because we're in a situation to where it's literally almost impossible. You you like leather? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of the leather and things like that is could have um, uh, pork. Pig bristles uh, sewing it together. Pig bristles. Because they get they yeah. get it from um, cows most of the time. But I was I was trying to buy a brush. Work. Yeah, I was trying to buy a brush not long ago, and every brush hair brush I saw said boar bristles. Mm -hmm. I was like, what in the world? And for those of you who are wondering, why would Watchmen buy a brush? He buys his beard because he don't have no hair. Yeah. <laughs> so he <laughs> brushed his ball head, you know. <laughs> but yeah, but seriously yeah. though, um, it's it's like it's in everything. I'm serious, you all. It's it's so much stuff out here that we it, you you just will be surprised. You buying stuff all the time from the internet. You go to stores buying stuff, and you have no idea what evil is behind that thing that you're purchasing. Whenever I go to the grocery store, I just I feel, ever since it was brought to my attention, they have the little handy wipes, the little alcohol things, yep. the wiping hands. Are, I said, man, they put those on there because when you think about it, hundreds and thousands of hands touch this cart. And so I always feel ooky now. I just do because yeah. people are doing all kinds of things with their hands. <laughs> and you just feel... <laughs> so imagine this. You go to a grocery store. You're pushing that cart around. 500 hands have already been on it. You don't know what their hands done been on. They could have been um, milking a cow or something before they left. Or they could have um, brushed their pig or whatever. Or whatever else they could Went have done. With the With their hands. Gone to the bathroom. <laughs> now they're pushing the cart. They didn't wash their hands. You, you put your hands Sneezing, right on Sneezing, rubbing their snot and touching the cart. You know, all this gross stuff. <laughs> and just say you bought yourself um, uh, something that you eat out of a bag. Okay, some raisins or something. And as soon as you get in the car, the vehicle, you open it up. You buy a bag of chips or something. You open it up. You didn't wash your hands. You touch that cart, you touch the money, in which that has gone through thousands of hands. Now you're eating from that bag. Yeah. So we have to understand that we are surrounded by 
filth in this world. We yeah. are surrounded, surrounded by, by darkness by in this world. It's just so yeah. much to think about, family. And this is why, we, yeah, look at those green faces. Those are the pewter faces <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. We are surrounded by it, family. And so this is why we have to pray for Yah's grace and mercy because these people, these people that are in this world, they don't They're obey the things, laws yeah. of Yah. They, they, they don't care about His laws. And so since they don't care, we're walking around in darkness, but we need His word to light our path. That's yeah. why it says, Yah's word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. And this is why we have to speak things, yeah. speak constantly, speak life, speak forgiveness, speak um, trust. We have to trust y'all. Mm -hmm. you go out of your mind if you thought about going out every day. Oh, God, what did I tell you? You ain't got to go through it like that. Just pray and trust y'all and just do the best you can. Yeah, I mean, you you, you, you know the stuff they do spraying in the sky. <laughs> they spraying stuff in the sky. One day I looked up out, out in the sky and so many doggone temp trails until it was crazy. And I'm like, what, y'all have 50 planes go through this one area? I was like, man, look at all these lines up here. That's like crazy. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what you could be breathing in. I mean, one time years ago, we were in the backyard and we looked up. Remember that stuff that was falling out of the sky? You could see all these little funny little stuff just falling out of the sky. I said, hey, y'all, let's go in the house. Mm -hmm. We had to go in the house. It was falling everywhere. This funny little little wiggly stuff just falling from everywhere. Yeah. You know, and I, I sat there. I said, this is like, we in that kind of a situation, though. Understand what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with uh, mad scientists. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. mad science. They mad out of their mind. Frankenstein. Huh? They are proving stuff. Approving. FDA approved. Food and deaf administration approved stuff. Yeah. That is not huh? even real food. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. So, so we to the point now Well, I, I wouldn't doubt it if it's some type of pork gas in the lights. You know, you got your light on. You're like, oh, man, there's a pork coming out that light. I mean, they put it. Let me tell you something. The enemy know what he's doing. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. So, you know, they got bullets that's laced with pork. Mm -hmm. Why you need to lace them with pork? And I heard when I read the article, they say that so when they kill Muslims, they say they, they can shoot and kill them and the pork can keep making them go to hell. <laughs> Now, now, if these uncircumcised people who don't even believe in the scriptures, so then why are you doing that then? Because obviously you know something going on with it, right? Yes. Putting it in everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know some, some people, some Christians out there, you, you know, you love your pork and everything. You're, well, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Well, yeah, family. Can I say? You can't, we can't live in a bubble and we're not suggesting that right. we do or that we can. Right. What we are saying is these things are happening. Yeah. Um, that the truth is what it is. And yeah. based on that and knowing this, this is why we need the mercy of Yah. Yeah. And this is why we have to have that close relationship with him. Because and that's why you got to be humble too, see. Yeah. Be humble. This is just our way of saying that the enemy has laid all kinds of traps and snares for all of us. Yep. They are very crafty. Yep. They have uh, made crafty counsel against the children of Yah. Yeah. And so they have uh, crossed all T's and dotted all I's. They're like, there is yeah. no way. They're, but see, one thing they forgot about, they forgot about the mercy of Yah. They sure did. Uh, thank you, uh, Kali, Kali Yisrael. They forgot about the mercy of Yah. Yeah. Not not for us to willfully sin, right. but for those things that we are not aware of, those and we traps can't control, and those snares. Right. right. Yeah, the, like if it is um, some type of pork gas in the lights, we're not saying that it is. <laughs> we're just saying those things that we are unaware uh -huh. of, the Most High has his mercy. And that's what the enemy <clears throat> didn't count on, the mercy yeah. of Yah. So we thank him for that. I, 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 and I guarantee you, just like I said, it's everywhere. I, I doubt very soon if you can get through the day without touching something this wicked. You just don't know it. I doubt if you can get through the day. That's why I pray over everything. I pray over, we pray over our home, pray over our land. We pray over over things all the time and because you just don't know. And you just say, Father, I have mercy. You know, have mercy. Don't let this stuff affect our health. I'm seeing now. Get this here. Now... When you buy things, there's another thing that I've been noticing popping up now, right? You go to buy a, a radio or, or, or TV or something like this. Now I'm noticing these little clauses saying that 
this item contains cancerous things. Yes. That could cause cancer. Yes. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What are you trying to tell me then? Right? Yeah. Now, I know if you eat it, you ain't supposed to eat it, but they, they're forcing to put this label. If you go and buy stuff on Amazon or some other some of these other sites, and you'll see this little clause down there saying that. And so I'm like, man, what is going on with this? Now, I'm starting to see it more and more. Yeah, I saw it on, I forget the name of the shoes, of the, uh, whatever the shoes were, the sandal thingies, the yeah. garden shoes. I saw it on there. I said, man, that's something. They'll start to let you know on packages and products. Everything now. Oh, by the way, it might cause cancer, so they can be without blame. Yeah. On any little thing, things that we are purchasing, it's just there. Yeah. This is their disclaimer. It's, it's wicked, family. It is what it is, <laughs> it though. Is what it but is. that's why the grace and mercy of Yah has to kick in. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Well, family. one thing that I did okay. want to share with you all when you pray. This is something that I've been praying. Uh, for quite some time now. Um, of course, we still have to do our due diligence in other areas. If you if you feel or sense spirits or whatever, do your due diligence spiritually, family. But when you're praying over your family, you want to make this declaration. You want to say, Yah, bless the airspace above us, yes. around us, and the ground beneath us. And be a fence around us. I, yes. I like that. Uh, Yah will be a hedge about around you and your family. And you, and you actually like being in the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Yah's bubble. Yeah. That is Yah's bubble. Bless the airspace above us, yeah. around us, and the ground beneath us. That's right. And you have to actually speak and say, "Don't allow the enemy to even come nigh our dwelling." Yeah. You see. And you can make the declaration too, family. I'm telling you how serious this prayer thing is. Yeah. If anybody on their way and they don't mean me any good, stop them in their tracks. Yeah, don't let them come. <laughs> don't even let them make yeah. it. Yeah. You can pray that as well. And Yah is faithful as promised. Yeah. Wow. Use every, I mean, see, those are our weapons. That's why the scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but That's mighty right. through Yah mighty to the pulling Yah. down of strongholds. That's right. See, these spirits and these demons, they know when you are on one accord with Yah and his spirit. Yeah. So when your words come out, you see how the enemy has fiery darts that he's throwing at us? Yeah. Our words will become fiery darts towards the wicked so that they can't accomplish anything that they've set out to do. So make your words fiery darts against the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, that's amazing when you look at the weapons of, of our warfare. I mm -hmm. tell you, it's, it's amazing. They, they are powerful. They're real, really very powerful. Yes, and we just got to understand that, that how powerful they are. I tell you, that meditation is the key. I'm telling you, you engage in med the scripture says, in this law, do if we meditate day and night. Mm -hmm. Every single day, you should be getting in the word, meditating in this word. God will bless you. Hallelujah. Hold on, let me see something. <clears throat> what if you are to protect them? Uh, Sister Cindy asks, what if you ask y'all to protect your family wherever they are? Is that not the same? It is absolutely the same. Yeah. I hear my mom praying that all the time when we when we come together and pray. She say, "Protect my family in Michigan and yeah. wherever they may be." She start naming we off pray the states. That too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, wherever they are, you can ask the Most High to surround them yeah. and protect them. I'm always praying for my brothers and sisters, my nieces and nephews, cousins, and yes. all of my family. And back in back in, uh, uh, in in Michigan and all over where they may be, I'm praying for all of them. You know. Yes. So yeah, the Most High can wherever your family is, um, He can definitely um, protect them and keep them safe and. And you just have to trust and believe that, you know? Yes. And just like we talked before, uh, we talked about how um, <clears throat> if your family is um, in, in a situation where they're not in the truth, as they call it, the truth, and they're not trying to live right, there's a specific prayer you can pray. And sometimes the Most High will have to take them through yes. um, hell to get them to where that prayer is trying to get them. Yes. <laughs> that prayer that you are praying um it, it may actually call forth Yah's chastisement on them yeah. so that they can get to the place they need to be. Yeah. And I used a good example of that uh, many times where I talked about how my mother and myself, we would pray for my brother when he was dating the Beckys. And um, <laughs> we prayed and we prayed. And so the most I had to take him through a little bit of something. And once he went through that little bit of something with the Beckys, he said, no more. 
-hmm. no more. And now he's married to a, a beautiful Israelite woman. And so your prayers are actually causing Yah to move. Yeah. And, and, and you might, when they're going through that thing that they're going through to get them to the right place, it might be uncomfortable for you. Yeah. Like, I prayed, okay. I didn't know y'all was going to do that, but um, get them out alive or bring them out safely or let this pass. Let this too pass. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. So that prayer will may, may cause them to go through something, but it will also, if you trust and believe, it will bring them to the place that they are supposed to be. You know, I remember years ago I was praying for someone that's close to me, someone that's in my family, and I was praying for them. And I'll never forget, I was at a uh, time I was working at Sears, and I had um, gotten a phone call. I had um, actually called home, and somebody told me what had happened to this particular person. And I'm telling you, it was enough to make my stomach almost just, I, I had to go and pray. I had to go to the bathroom and go in the stall and pray there, so I couldn't go nowhere else at the time, you know. And I had to get a prayer through really bad. You know about this, what this person was situation they were in, and I prayed hard. I mean, I prayed so doggone hard because this person was in a situation where they were about to get locked up forever for something they didn't do, you know. And I just prayed, and the person came forth and admitted that they were the ones that actually did this particular crime. And I sat there, I was like, he could have been gone. But the, the real person who did it came for. Yeah, and I, I mean, I prayed big time for him. You know, I, I, was, I said, Father, y'all don't do this. Don't do this. I, I prayed so. But sometimes most High he take people through things because before that happened, I was praying for the most High to guide him, right? Mm -hmm. And those were some of the things that shaped his life that guided him. Now he, he believes in a lot of the same things that we believe, and he's seeking y'all. So... This is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Sometimes your prayers, your prayers will cause things to happen in a person's life to bring them to a place to where they could be received. I had one guy, he, he told me about what happened to him, his brother, and it was horrible. Mm -hmm. Shot so many times in the head. And he was like, man, did this, why did this have to happen like this? But his brother pulled through. Now, I don't know if he's still alive, but I know he pulled through that thing. And one time he was very violent and out there in the world trying to do stuff. And, and eventually that, but he got to the point where he didn't want to even be, be in that world no more doing that kind of stuff, you know. And so sometimes y'all yeah, got to take you through some things, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes he got to take you through some things to calm you down. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen guys that I grew up with back in the days that were heavy into fighting. Just every chance, ready to fight, ready to fight. And one day something happened to one of them so bad after that, that was it. He chilled, he chilled after that mm -hmm. because he could have been killed. Yes. And it was enough to make him say, you know what, I ain't even getting into all that stuff no more. I'm going to live me a life and be happy. And I'm getting... Sometimes you have to go through things to let go of things, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do. You have to go through some stuff, okay? So then... Just understand that if you, when you're going through, look for Yah in it. That's all we're saying. Look for Yah in everything you're going through. I don't care if the enemy is coming on you. Look for Yah in it. Okay? Because that's the mistake that we make sometimes. All we see is the enemy. Mm -hmm. We don't see Yah behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And it, then we then we just, you, we, you don't understand. I, 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 there were times I prayed against things mm -hmm. and against people only to find out Yah was behind it. Mm -hmm. Boy, that quickly changed my way of seeing things. Shepherd yes. of Hermas did that for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I read the Shepherd of Hermas. I began to see, man, here we talking about the devil all the time, and the devil doing this, an enemy coming against me on this and that. But I, when I read the Shepherd of Hermas, I, I had to take a whole different view on things. Yes, I said that to me, I see now, Yah is behind all this. He's all behind things it all. <laughs> work together for your good, right? Yes. That's what it's good saying. Everything give thanks. Yes, <laughs> why? Because because the can't nothing happen in Yah's universe except he ordain it. Mm -hmm. They gotta get permission. Satan can't do things. These demons can't do nothing in your life unless they get permission. And so when things are going a certain <laughs> way, 
You have to find out why is Yah giving these demons permission. Yeah. It goes back to looking at yourself, examining yourself. Yes. If something is happening in your life and it says, don't think it's strange. Don't think it's strange. Okay. Why is he allowing this? That should be the question that pops into your head automatically, especially when it's one of those fiery trials. Yeah. You, you have to ask yourself, okay, um, I can't think of this as strange. He is allowing this for a reason. And it's for you to determine what that reason is to seek yes. him diligently. Diligently. Now, I want to read this. We're going to close with this verse here. I want to read this, this, this scripture. Because when you really look at this scripture here, this scripture I memorized. This is one of the first scriptures as a, as a child. My mother made me memorize this scripture. And it's it been a blessing to me because the words of it help me to understand what's going on. But this is something that you should drink in your cup of tea every morning. It goes like this. 23rd Psalms. Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Wait a minute. So if he restored your soul, then your soul at one place wasn't in a place where it needed to be restored. That's right. He you're in a fallen state. You're in a fallen state. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So he does it for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it because you were so righteous and so right. Mm -hmm. He did it for his name's sake because you bear his name. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Man, mm -hmm. so you got me walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but I ain't going to fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You mean tell me you're going to make me eat in front of my enemies? Mm -hmm. Are you hearing this? You prepare a table before me right in front of my enemies. They looking at me like this. Well, I'm eating. I mean, when, you, <laughs> when you think about this, then he says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run up over, over. But this bottom line here, I love it. He said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. This alone is enough to say, man. He said, in spite of the fact that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in spite of the fact that I'm eating before my enemies, Goodness and mercy gonna follow me all days all of my days life. Of my life. <laughs> That's Hallelujah. an optimist. Hallelujah. 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 He is so positive in his thinking, even though he got stuff happening. He said, That's okay. Goodness and mercy gonna follow me. Wow. <laughs> I love that passage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Put that in your cup, like Watchman said. Drink it. Drink it. Every day. Let mm -hmm. that be your coffee in the morning. <laughs> Pull that up and sip on that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We love you, family. Yes, we, we love you. you. We want we you to be you blessed. That's today. right. Be blessed. Enjoy the rest of this day. Meditate mm -hmm. on that right there. Somebody asked in the comment, how do you meditate? Just go over that scripture. Chew on it over and over. Repeat it over and over. Think on it. And yes, if you do have an audio Bible, that's good too. You're really listening to it. That's not really meditation, but it helps. <laughs> you know? Mm. Play that word. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we love you, family. Thank you all for joining us. And yes. with that, we will say Shabbat Shalom, shalom family. Shabbat shalom.